Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A nine-year-old boy accidentally shot inside his home. Police say it was his father who pulled the trigger. Mara? COVID may have slowed it down, but it didn't stop it. Tonight, the Somerset Collection opens in Detroit. All right, Mara. But we begin with the local preparations underway tonight after the first COVID-19 vaccine has been recommended for emergency use authorization. With the number of cases, hospitalizations and deaths climbing across the country, distribution of Pfizer's vaccine could only be days away. Yeah, a decision from the FDA on whether to green light this actually could happen at just about any moment. Let's bring in Jason Colthorpe following this live tonight. Once the vaccine gets authorized, the big question is what happens to the states, including Michigan? Exactly, Devin. And as you say, this timeline could be very quick once the approval comes. That could happen quickly. Vaccines could be doled out within just a few days. And when it happens, it will be at a select few Michigan hospitals to begin with. Five hospitals will be the first to get the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Beaumont in Troy, Ascension Macomb, Oakland in Warren, U of M Health System in Ann Arbor, Spectrum Health Butterworth in Grand Rapids, and MidMichigan Medical Center in Midland. Five hospitals that were chosen because of their cold storage capabilities necessary to store the Pfizer vaccine. Once they are approved, we expect to receive a limited allocation of these vaccines and expect to receive shipments every week. There are about 300 sites across Michigan that have signed up to receive the vaccine, which over the next two weeks should be about 85,000 doses from Pfizer and 173,000 from Moderna. Yes, the National Guard uh, and General Rogers has been a, a great partner in our vaccine distribution process. Uh, we have already reached out to hospitals and others who believe they may need assistance with actually having people administer the vaccine vaccine. So the National Guard, at least initially, will be having teams that are helping court in administering the vaccine. Once hospitals vaccinate their own workforces, the goal will be to treat the process like the flu shot, starting with the people most at risk. They'll come in at their scheduled time. They'll meet with the pharmacist or technician. They'll get a record card with the vaccination that they that they got. Um, we'll also email them that record. So hopefully very systematic, but as you can hear, it's going to be all hands on deck in Michigan to pull this off. Now, the Health and Human Services Secretary is saying today he's hoping 20 million Americans will be vaccinated over the next few weeks. It's good news, but take it with some perspective. That's only about 6% of the U.S. population, so still a long way to go. Devin? Sure is. It's a mammoth task, Jason. But how soon before hospitals and clinics beyond those initial five, uh, when do they get doses delivered then? Like we said, there's a, a few hundred of those that have applied to get those. Yeah. And it could come as early as December 15th, so just about five days. That can begin as long as those clinics, hospitals, et cetera, have been approved to be able to house the vaccine and store it as well properly, they will get the green light as well. Devin. All right, Jason. Now, today's vaccine vote comes as the state reported more than 5,900 new cases of the coronavirus. 182 more Michiganders have died because of the virus, 50 of those deaths coming in the past 24 hours. Nationwide, newly released data from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services reveals one in three hospitals topped 90 percent ICU capacity last week. With the CDC now projecting there will be between 332,000 to 362,000 coronavirus deaths by January 2nd. Here at home, Governor Gretchen Whitmer addresses what to expect with the distribution of the vaccine in the coming months and that employers and schools will not be forcing people to take the vaccine. I think any employer who is worried about uh, making sure that their workforce is safe and healthy, they should be making plans right now for how they will encourage and or incentivize their employees to get vaccinated. A safe, effective vaccine is the strongest tool that we have against this virus once it becomes available. Now, again, the FDA is expected to deliver its decision on whether to authorize Pfizer's vaccine for emergency use at any moment. If anything develops overnight, we'll bring it to you on ClickOnDetroit.com and Local 4 News today, beginning at 4.30 a.m. A Detroit father rushes his nine-year-old son to the hospital after he accidentally shoots him. 
It happened this evening at a home on Meringue near Kadju. Detroit police tell us preliminary investigations show the father was trying to take bullets out of his handgun when it went off hitting the nine year old. The father then took the boy to the hospital where he's listed in temporary serious condition. Please tell us this remains under investigation. Two Ann Arbor police officers are nearly run over while responding to a home on Stadium Boulevard. Police just released video of the incident that happened in November. Officers say they were called to a home because the 31 year old man who lives there was behaving erratically. While the officers were there and on foot, the homeowner tried to run the officers down by chasing them around the home in his car. Just my three tried to run me over. Officers were eventually able to take him into custody without anyone getting hurt. Warren police shoot a man who they say attempted to run officers over. This happened in Madison Heights at the Knights Inn on DeQuinder near I-696. We're told it happened when officers tried to arrest a 35-year-old man for burglary. And that's when police said the man drove at them who fired, shooting the man several times. He's been taken to the hospital and is listed tonight in critical condition. Downtown Detroit's latest shopping destination is open. The Somerset Studio opening this week in the Detroit Element Hotel, bringing everything in Troy downtown and offering up special savings as well. Our Mara McDonald is live tonight downtown. And uh, Mara, this was slated to open much earlier than this. Kimberly, it sure was, but as usual, COVID put a wrench into the mix. Well, tonight, no longer. It's up, it's running, and there's much more to come. Tonight, the black wrap, which has been obscuring the Somerset space, came down to reveal a special holiday window. We wanted to bring window shopping back. You know, when I was a kid, back in the 50s and 60s, what you did in Detroit was come downtown and look at windows. It was amazing to just look at how pretty all the holiday windows are. This is the 2020 spin on it. The first pop up here is Max Mara with special QR codes on the windows you can scan. In this case, the Max Mara code is for 30% off items at the Troy store, a substantial saving. In addition, the lockers are in. If you're downtown and order anything before 2 p.m. from any Somerset Troy store, we're going to have those items delivered to you same day and put into a locker. You'll be texted a code and poof. You get in early 2021, you'll be able to shop in studio here. It will feature an ever rotating selection of items, some luxury, some functional. Back here live when you, Kimberly, I'm not sure you can really tell, but when you look in the window, those aren't the actual clothes. They've come up with a way to project the Max Mara collection onto like special fabric. So you have an ever changing amount of clothes in the window. Uh, and that coupon code I talked about, the QR code, that's gonna be a thing that is gonna remain here. So it may be 30% on Max Mara now, uh, but could it be 30%, 20% or something like that off Williams Sonoma or anything else at Somerset? Likely yes, we're live downtown tonight back to you. It really looks if you hadn't have told me I would have thought it was real clothes in the in the window Mars. So I'm wondering this this really is actual window shopping. I just want to make sure we're clear. Did they decide to roll this out this way because of COVID I'm assuming? Yeah, they did, you know, and, and you're right. It is window shopping for now, soon to be in-store shopping, uh -huh. probably in January. But, you know, there are a lot of people who don't want to go into a smaller space right now. Um, and, you know, there's also an issue with being able to stock it. So, yeah, COVID sure. is why they rolled it out this way. Yeah. Okay. Back to you. Mara, thank you. In front of the Max Mara store. <laughs> we appreciate it. Four Republican U.S. congressmen from Michigan and 15 Republican state lawmakers are now supporting the lawsuit to overturn the state's election results. Congressman Jack Bergman, Bill Huizenga, John Molinar, and Tim Wahlberg all signed a brief today in support of the suit coming from the Texas Attorney General to the Supreme Court. All four of those men won re-election in that election in November. The suit was filed earlier this week by the Texas AG asking the Supreme Court to overturn the results not just of the Michigan vote, but Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin as well. Michigan's Attorney General Dana Nessel issued a written response to the suit in court today, calling it unprecedented and without factual foundation.
Texas has absolutely no standing uh, to uh, disenfranchise the 5.5 million voters in the state of Michigan and our 10 million residents. Uh, there's been no injury that's been demonstrated to the state of Texas. Uh, our election has been certified. It's been uh, upheld by every court uh, in which it's been challenged, both in the Michigan state courts and in the federal courts. And in fact, Texas has failed to identify a single voter who voted in Michigan who should not have, let alone any evidence of widespread voter fraud. We've posted Attorney uh, General Nestle's entire written response as well as the list of state lawmakers supporting this Texas lawsuit. You'll find it all at clickondetroit.com. A new intersection opening in Oakland County next month, part of the big changes with the I-75 modernization project. MDOT has put a diverging diamond interchange at Big Beaver and I-75. It will hopefully reduce accidents there as drivers won't have to turn in front of oncoming traffic. This is one of three diamonds planned in the I-75 modernization project. There's one already open at I-75 and University Drive. Still ahead, it has been one of the hardest items to find during the pandemic. Why the shortage on Clorox wipes is going to continue well into the new year. Here comes Ben. Debbie and Kim, we still got, uh, actually have some fog out there right now. We'll tell you what that means for the morning commute. And also we'll be staring down that rain and snow for the weekend. All that coming up. All right, Ben, but first, thieves target a Royal Oak business in the middle of the night. We'll see how they got in next.